The Taliban poses a threat to the stability of Pakistan and Afghanistan, where constitutional governments find themselves really in a war with the Taliban over legitimacy and territory. The concern is not to allow the Taliban to return to power at the point of a gun. This is a critical moment for Afghanistan, is the era in which the international community has invested enormously and has held a large presence, is essentially coming to an end. So the real question is how well will the Afghans deal with the continuing security challenge they're going to face from the Taliban and indirectly from Pakistan, which continues to provide a sanctuary. The biggest concern for the United States and the international community is that if the Taliban retake significant control of Afghanistan or assert themselves inside of Pakistan, they will again provide safe haven to international terrorists like Al-Qaeda, who attacked us on 9-11. Of course, the humanitarian concerns are very real as well. Wherever the Taliban have governed, women have suffered. Children, especially girls, haven't been able to go to school. The kind of ruthless governance that they provide is not satisfactory to any sense of human rights. When I was in Swat, which was a place of tourism and beauty, suddenly changed into a place of terrorism, I was just 10 that more than 400 schools were destroyed. Women were flogged. People were killed. And our beautiful dreams turned into nightmares. Talib can at its most anodyne just mean student, religious student. There is, of course, famously a much darker side to this movement. They use an interpretation of Sharia, of Islam, that is very hardline, particularly around moral questions like women's rights. The Afghan Taliban movement originated in 1994 during the period of civil war and chaos after the collapse of the communist government. They swept across the country and during the rest of that decade the Taliban movement was essentially a governing party set up their version of an Islamic state in Afghanistan. By 2001 it was clear that the Afghan Taliban had a close relationship with Al-Qaeda and that's why after 9-11 the United States invaded Afghanistan and deposed the Taliban from Kabul. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. After 9-11, the Taliban made a resurgence in Afghanistan and have gradually built themselves up to be quite an impressive fighting force again. There are many reasons why people are part of the Taliban movement. You will see the hardcore religious ideologues who believe that they're going to restore Afghanistan to a proper Islamic state. You've got some who just feel like power should be theirs again. You've got some lower level guys who are probably just there for the money or because they've had a local grievance in their village or district and the Taliban are going to help them resolve it. And there are some who find it appealing. Some of the propaganda of the Taliban tends to be around forms of nationalism, anti-Westernism. The Taliban leaders who fled Afghanistan after 2001, they were given sanctuary in Pakistan. They were allowed to resuscitate their movement in 2003. They were helped considerably uh, by the Pakistan intelligence agencies. Pakistan had a policy called the strategic debt, which called for dominating Afghanistan through a client regime. 
that will not allow India into Afghanistan and will let Pakistan use Afghan territory in case of a confrontation with India. Pakistan skillfully channeled resources to nurture extremely violent Islamist factions among the Pashtuns, both in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. But eventually some of them did turn against uh, Pakistan. The Pakistani Taliban were born in 2007, so much more recently than the Afghan Taliban. They are made up of Pakistani nationals, and their goal is to carry out a revolution in Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan, not in Kabul. And Pakistan ke andar is zalimana nizam ko tod karna, aur in Muslimano ko shari nizam dena, aur in Muslimano ko insafi nizam dena. Ye inshallah hamari maksad. Well, no one can imagine the Taliban marching back into Kabul uh, right away. As the United States withdraws, and as NATO withdraws, and as it leaves behind Afghan security forces that have lots of challenges, not just their professional competency on the battlefield, but also their cohesion politically, and whether they have a government that they can be loyal to, and whether they have enough popular support, whether they're willing to take the kind of casualties that fighting the Taliban has required. So these are big questions about the future of Afghanistan. We have to recognize Afghanistan will not be a perfect place. And it is not America's responsibility to make it one. The future of Afghanistan must be decided by Afghans. As U.S. forces depart from the region, uh, the Afghan government and the other parties to this conflict face certain clear dilemmas. The Afghan state needs to come to terms with how much of the Afghan insurgency can be brought into the political process, how much needs to be fought to a standstill, how much needs to be destroyed in order for the Afghan state to survive. What the British public, the American public, the public, and all our partner countries, Japan, uh, European Union, everywhere else, Canada, expects is the same that what the Afghan public expects, a functioning government a government dedicated to the well-being of every Afghan. For its part, the Pakistani state needs to determine how it's going to deal with its Pakistani Taliban insurgency, and it also needs to determine how it will deal with the Afghan Taliban, whether it will continue to allow a safe haven to persist on its own soil. The Taliban insurgents also face a dilemma. They need to determine what kind of a political settlement they would be willing to accept, whether from Islamabad or from Kabul, whether they can be brought into the future state of Afghanistan or a Pakistani state, and what their main goals are moving forward. And because it's not a monolith, different members of the Taliban are likely to choose differently. The United States and the rest of the world, which has invested so much over the years in Afghanistan, has really got to decide what it is they're prepared to live with and what matters most. There's one school of thought that would say, we don't really care what Afghanistan looks like, so long as the government that runs it whether it's some version of the current government, the Taliban, or some combination, so long as they don't allow their country to be used as a terrorism base. Or the United States and others have to say, we care about that, but not just that. What we also care about is the quality and nature of life. Thank you.